Hi everybody. I'm, I think this is working. <laughs> now I'm live. Okay. Awesome. So somebody chat with me so I know the chat is working. So I know there's a few of you there. Hi, Melinda. So nice to see you. Well, I don't see you, but like, you know, see you. <clears throat> so hopefully I know other people are coming because I messed it up. <clears throat> and went live I anyway still learning you know like this <clears throat> thank you Melinda do you think I look wonderful I uh, I'm in my studio right now so it's like um and I can't hear you which is so bizarre that I'm just talking to myself in here but anyway this is my studio so if you can see it that's one of my lights it's all a bit, I need to work on it a little bit more, but it's coming along, I think. So I had to send out another link to on YouTube and on my newsletter because <laughs> I messed up the link. Uh, technology. I spent all day yesterday trying to be sure the technology was right. And then I ended up messing it up anyway, but that's okay. I think that's, I'm, I'm really one of those people who's super open to messing things up. Like I'll just mess it up and then I'll get in and figure it out later, you know? So it's the leap and then go, Oh, did I just leave off a cliff kind of approach to life? So, um, how are you, Melinda? Are you doing well? You're the only one right now who's commented. And you're in North Carolina. It's so cool. Um, good. I'm glad to hear you're doing well. That's wonderful. Melinda, what do you want to talk about today? I mean, I've got a plan. Um, I don't know. It might just be you and I since I messed up the stream. <laughs> I hope not, but it could be. <laughs> That'd be fun. You and me, I'll just chat and then you write questions. <laughs> um, but, um, like I'm going to talk about, you know, bang for buck skincare and what skincare just what people need to know to get value out of their skincare. So do you have any specific questions since, you know, it's not quite 11, so we'll give it, you know, give it a little longer, but. And I'm writing here the code. It is SB 15 for 15% off the store. I think you probably know that Truth Treatments is raising their prices starting, actually we're supposed to start Thursday and I rebelled and said, now I'm going to have a sale. <laughs> so... So I'm having a sale and then I have to raise it Monday. So anyway, if you want anything, this is a good time to get it. So that's why I put the code in there. Okay. You want to talk about rosacea skincare? Okay, cool. Um, you know, let's just start talking about that. It's 11 o'clock and I know people will probably just kind of like come and go and join and not join. And since I buggered it up, it may not be, I don't know. We'll see. Um, 
So <clears throat> kind of as I talk, Melinda, if you have questions, just write it in there, okay? You and me, we're going to have a time here. Um, so I, I don't know how, how much have I talked about this. I should probably do like a whole video on rosacea skincare. I'm using this to get ideas, right, for videos. Um, so rosacea, Melinda, is primarily a gut issue. I don't know if you've heard that before. Um, it is a gut issue, and it's it has to do with the flora in your in your gut being um, uh, depleted. And it can be depleted for many different reasons. Um, you know, our American diet is very acidic. Um, if you take a lot of, um, if you've taken a lot of antibiotics or medicines, it can really de deplete your flora. I mean, the gut issues are huge right now just because of our diet and how toxic our environment is, that sort of thing. So I think rosacea, a lot of people have rosacea. My best friend has rosacea. <clears throat> so she's, so I'll just tell you what she's been doing. And I think it's made a difference is doing cleanses or doing things that flush out, flush your, your gut of toxins. So it means really going on like a very restrictive diet and also using cranberry juice, unsweetened cranberry juice can really help to flush out your liver and your kidneys and that sort of thing. And then replacing your gut flora. And that can be with, um, you know, you can go to like a whole foods or a nutritional food store and get, um, a flora, you know, um, I'm trying to think of what it's called. The word is not popping to my head. Um, it'll come to me what word I'm trying to think of, but basically you can take high doses of, um, enzymes for your gut. <clears throat> Probably somewhere during the next hour, this is going to come to me and I'm going to write it down and you're, we're going to have it, but you take this particular vitamins and it really does help. I've been on them for a long time. And honestly, my guts went from, I lived on basically like, you know, boiled chicken and rice. Like my guts were terrible. And it's gotten to the point now where I can eat just about anything. So, I mean, it really does make a difference. So I think start with that, but also using really probiotics. Thank you, Melinda. I appreciate that. So go on some really good probiotics, but I think you also have to change your diet at the same time. Like you can't be still eating of high acidic, you know, toxin heavy kind of preservatives, like lots of preservatives in your food, that kind of diet as well and expect it to be okay. Like, I think it's important to do, my motto is always throw everything at it at the same time. Don't just, um, don't just do one thing, like do everything and then kind of slowly but surely see what works best. I mean, I've kind of done the gamut and I think it's made a big difference. So I would say try that and then use very gentle skincare. Um, although if you can handle, hi, Andrea. Um, hi, oh, from Germany. Guten Abend. No, guten Guten Tag. No, wait. Is it Abend? I'm sorry. I just interrupted my little spiel here with Belinda. I forget if it's Abend or talked to say good morning. Um, but, or you might be evening there. Anyway, I love Germany. So anyway, Melinda, I would say use like, you know, get your usual vitamin C. But my friend, my best friend, Judy, actually her skin is so sensitive. She's had to use a very low um, quantity of vitamin C and retinol because her sister, her her, um, her body just can't handle it. Like her, her whole system is still so sensitive. So you just have to go with what you can do. I think if you can use a vitamin C, I would say try like the image. If you're going to get something off my site and you have rosacea, I would say try the image MD because it's, this is a little bit, this is less strong, I guess, than the truth treatments, even though truth treatments, you might love truth treatments. I, I, of course, it's like my favorite, but I think for gentler, whoops, this, can you see this? Um, everything's backwards on this. Um, I would say try that. And then if you're going to use a retinol, you, I would say use the image one just because then you won't have, and that's this one in the blue bottle. Um, but I think do that. So I hope that answers your question, Melinda. Okay, Andrea, I, I do like my bangs. You know that I need a haircut. My hair grows an inch a month. I have crazy hair. Um, I had a company want me to do a promo of um, hair growth, the stuff biotin that helps your hair grow. I was like, uh, no, <laughs> I don't need that. My hair is crazy. So crazy. Okay. So I, Andrea and whoever else is here, I'm actually not on the right page to see how many people are here. So if you're here, please go ahead and just say hello. So I know who you are. I can greet you. Um, um, so I'm going to talk for a minute about bang for buck skincare and, 
um, what you need to know about in shopping for skincare, what's, um, what to look out for. I look like I have really dark circles in this light and this should be okay. I don't know. Anyway, say Livy. So I'm going to talk for a minute. And as I go along, you know, please just ask questions. And as I go, I'll try to answer their questions. And we're really going to focus on value here. Um, and I'm not just going to talk about products I sell because I think that's fair <laughs> to talk about everybody. Cause I think there's some really good products out there. Everybody can, um, can use and know about and that sort of thing. Oh, thank you, Melinda. Three. <laughs> Melinda's paying attention. I'm not sure how to pay attention to all that at the same time. Anyway, um, so, so I'm going to talk about everything, but I think um, for value items, I think the main thing you're trying to pay attention to when it comes to buying value, especially with inflation, you know, Germany, I know you've got a lot of um, high energy costs. I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, yeah, hello. So it's really, um, you know, it's hard, right? So I would say, the number, there's two products that are m the main thing. If you want to really narrow it down to value, like there's millions of products out there, right? There's, I've tried them all, trust me. Um, and oh, by the way, if you want to shop on my site, it's SB, I think I put it early on in the chat. It's SB15 for 15% 15 off everything. Truth Treatments prices go up on Monday and that's not me, that's the vendor. So, um, you know, go in there and, and if you if you want true treatments all the time but but uh, image md is also on sale okay so i would say the top two um ingredient products that you need to be attention to pay attention to one is vitamin c and the other one is retinol so vitamin c is a little dicey and the reason i say that is because there are there are eight different types of vitamin c out there so i'm an esthetician as well as a makeup artist and I'm telling you, almost every product line that I see says it has vitamin C. But because I know ingredients, I can go and look at the ingredient drop down and see um, where on the deck, where on the deck it is and what type it is. So it's really important. I have a blog on my website um, <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do on Monday is actually or maybe I'll even do it today is send out um, what we talked about and links so that everybody, and, and as I get better doing live and I actually can use the OBS live stream software here better, I'll actually uh, be able to get this to you immediately. But right now, if, if you're not on my newsletter, join my newsletter so that I can get this information to you. I'm gonna repeat that a couple times during the uh, um, during this. So the vitamin C, there's eight different types. So say for example, the ordinary. So the ordinary is a very common brand. I actually think it's a good brand. It's very inexpensive, um, but they have a vitamin C. I think they charge $15 for their vitamin C. So they use what's called L-ascorbic acid. So L-ascorbic acid is the most common type of vitamin C out there. I would say I mean, I'm not gonna be able to throw, bring up a percentage because I've not done enough research, but I would say it's the most common. l acid is water-based. So what that means is it doesn't get very deeply into your skin. So if you haven't used vitamin C before and say you say, hey, I'm just gonna go try some of the ordinary because it's cheap. I don't know if you have the ordinary in Germany, Andrea, but um, but I would say, you know, say you give, give that a go and you notice a little bit of a change. Well, what's going to happen is you're going to notice a little bit, but then it'll stop or you'll notice some, I don't know how much depends on your skin and then it'll stop working. And the reason it stops working is because it doesn't get deeply into the skin. It can't, it's oil based, it's water based. So anything water based just runs off your skin, right? So I've got some water here. You put it on your skin, right? It just goes, bleh. so that's why it's better to get a higher value ingredient and then you need to use less and you have a greater effect so for example um, tetrahexidecyl ascorbate is one of the higher levels the two highest one is tetraisopalmitate and the other one is tetrahexidecyl ascorbate i know i'm rattling these terms off they are on my website if you go to my blog and you look up types of vitamin c that article is going to come up that blog post that i wrote so i would say you know, go read that. It's it's very informative. It's a little bit too much information, but the the tetrahexadecyl ascorbate is the one that's in um, Truth Treatments, and it's also in the Image MD that I carry. And a lot of lines have that. So what you want to do when you look at an ingredient deck is you want to look at where it shows up in the deck. So for example, the Truth Treatments, why we all love it so much. Here it is. This is the C serum. It shows up very high. I think it's number one or number two. 
on the ingredient dip, which means in the truth treatments, you're getting about 80%. Most skincare, you get about 20 to 25%. That's not necessarily bad. Actually, Melinda and I were just talking about her rosacea. So rosacea makes your skin more sensitive, right? So I think if you've got more sensitive skin, then you know, get a lower quantity to start off with. The truth treatments is probably too much, right? I think I don't have sensitive skin. My skin, I put all kinds of shit. Sorry, I have a potty mouth. I put tons of stuff on my skin all the time. Doesn't bother me at all. But I think you want the lower quantity if you have more sensitive skin. Or you could use it like every other day until your skin gets used to it. So that can happen too. But I would say going for that or go for the tetraisopalmitate, which is very expensive, very high end. <clears throat> to give you an example of the differences, l acid costs $10 a kilo. Say if you just went and bought l acid in a store, it's $10 a kilo. If you tried to buy um, tetrahexidesilisorbate, it's $800 a kilo. That's the difference. I mean, it's like there's an epic difference in value added. So I think for value when it comes to vitamin C, I would absolutely say get that ingredient, get it depending on your skin, where you want it on that ingredient deck. I think also cost is going to come into it. You know, this is almost $200, the tooth treatment. So, you know, because it's, there's so much in there, right? It's, you're you're going to end up spending more. I think this is like 68 or 60. Sorry, I don't know my own prices, but anyway, I don't, this is like in the 60s um, because it's less, there's less in there. So that's why there's such a big price differential. So if I was going to do bang for buck skincare and I didn't get all this stuff at cost, I would say I would get a good cleanser that's good for my skin type. If you have very dry skin, I would say get an oil cleanser. Um, just it's very nice. I mean, you can go to like the drugstore and get an oil based cleanser, an oil cleanser, it's called. I think Neutrogena has one. I mean, those aren't non toxic, but I think it's a good, you know, cleanser. Shiseido makes a really good oil cleanser. So does Bobby Brown if you want to go higher end. Anyway, I'm just throwing out brands here for you. Um, if you have kind of normal to dry skin, I think the cleanser with Image MD that I carry is great. I love it. It has AHAs in it, alpha hydroxy acid. So, it's wonderful. Truth Treatments also has some great cleansers, a honey cleanser and a peppermint. But um, I would say go lower cost on your cleanser and put your money into a really good high value vitamin C. And then use it, you know, I use it morning and night because I get this stuff at cost, but you go according to your budget. Um, yes, hit the like button. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Belinda. Everybody hit the like button. Um, so, so I hope that's helpful with vitamin C. I would say, and, and when it comes to the holidays and buying someone a gift, you know, if you get any woman a vitamin C serum, she's going to, she should be happy, right? Because those are things that make such a big difference on your skin is vitamin C. Taking vitamin C internally also makes an enormous difference, ladies. It, it's huge. If you, I would take, and I don't know if you take supplements. I'm big on supplements. Um, I know a lot of you aren't. I'm, you know, I'm a... I'm huge on it. I take about, um, I take 1500 milligrams in the twice, like two in the morning and two at night. So that's almost 4,000 milligrams of vitamin C every single day. And honestly, that strengthens your entire body as well as your skin makes a huge difference as well as omega-369 oils, taking that internally, um, makes a huge difference. I talk a lot about this stuff on my, um, on my channel. I think it's, for older women, you need more oil in your diet, not less. Many times we think, oh, I don't want to eat, take oils because I'll gain weight. That's not true. So take your, you can go to any sort of health food store, get your omega. In fact, I'll put that in um, Monday's newsletter. So omega-369 oils and a link for that. Um, you know, I think if you take two tablespoons in the morning and two at night, and then if you don't notice enough of a difference, take more. Like seriously, I don't think you can take too much. It can upset your stomach a little bit, that that much oil. So then just take it with some food. That's what I do. Um, but honestly, I started doing that. And this is a little bit too much information, but I went to the bathroom. I just kept going number two. <laughs> I kept going to the bathroom because it, it cleans your system out. It's amazing. All, along with drinking a lot of spring water, fresh spring water, you cannot underestimate the power of these things. In fact, skincare is actually 80% internal and 20% external. So huge, 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 huge. Um, so, all right. So I've got a couple questions here. Carla. Hi, Carla. 
All right, Carla asks, why isn't truth treatments listed on the environmental working group skin care of safe products? My medical professional told me taking vitamin C supplements is very hard on the kidneys. Have you heard this? Okay, so the first question, yeah, I've asked Ben about that. He's the creator of Truth Treatments. Um, and he's he the way he answered it was, it's very complicated to get on that list. It isn't like you just sort of, you know, apply and you're on. It's actually a fairly lengthy process. Um, and it, I guess it's costly. It's like, it's not like as simple as we would think it is. So I know he's in the process. I know he's, he's, you know, wanting to get on that list. Um, I, there's no reason why he shouldn't be on that list basically with the skincare and the ingredients. And you can look at the ingredients and know it should be on there. Cause they're like really non-toxic clean, um, type ingredients. Sorry. There was like something on my camera. Um, so I, I know he's working on it. There, there's the answer for that. I would like more of an answer from him, like when and all of that, because um, I think he, need, he it's really important that he do that. Okay, medical professional taking me vitamin C supplements hard on the kidneys. So I think that the, you need the vitamin C. So I think the point here is to strengthen your kidneys. I mean, I did the makeup. I was doing a photo shoot and I did the makeup of a surgeon who specialized in doing liver and kidney surgery. Um, and so I asked him, what do you think about supplements and vitamin C supplements? And, <clears throat> you know, what, what is your take on this? And especially if someone has like gallstones or kidney stones, cause that's the kind of surgery. And his input was don't take any supplements. Don't do anything about it. Just get surgery. And I was like, isn't that harder on the body than taking supplements? Like, it seems like a very extreme approach, but I think, I think the medical community, that's what they have. That's their bubble, right? It's, it's surgery and pills, right? So I'm of a different mentality. I'm of, Hey, strengthen your kidneys, strengthen your gallbladder, you know, make those parts of your body really so healthy that you can take all of that. I mean, a lot of that has to do with our systems are just very weakened due to our, um, you know, living in, living in the world and the quality, poor quality of food and, um, toxins and things like that. I talked about that a little bit at the beginning. So I would say, um, no, take vitamin C, <laughs> like take it, strengthen your kidneys and liver. They're not going to get strong. If you don't take it, they're just going to get weaker. So, um, God bless your doctor, but I disagree. All right. Melinda asks, is there a natural Botox? So I actually, I'm going to publish a video on Monday about why I don't use Botox. Um, and there's some, I have some very, very good reasons and, and things to, um, oh, I got to put the link on that. Sorry. I just remembered something. Um, anyway, so natural Botox, you know, I've heard of, I've read things about, oh, use this. It's a natural Botox. Generally speaking, those kinds of things are even more temporary than Botox. Like Botox lasts three to four months. Um, most of the other sort of alternatives, and I'm not talking about Diasport or Zeomin, I'm talking about non-toxic versions might last for like a day. So I, I actually don't know. I was, I did hear about some research being done, which I'm very keen on finding out about using snake venom. So snake venom, um, you know, in real, it's same thing in very small doses is non-toxic. Sounds weird, but it's true. Um, and then using that into the skin. So I, I haven't heard how that's going. I think that the pharmaceuticals will fight tooth and nail to not have that on the market if it does work, because that would be a, you know, that's not botulism, right? Like Botox, that's actually a, um, you know, it's a natural substance. Okay. It can be poisonous in large doses, but it's a natural substance, which is way better than injecting botulism into your face, which does not stay localized by the way there's been research done. So that's why I'm one of the reasons I'm against it. Um, so, okay, cool. So we, so, all right, the, I think I've answered the question. So I'm going to continue on with more about, um, we talked about vitamin C and I want to touch on, so that's your, that's your first high value item. I would say no matter what, put your money into a really good vitamin C, internal and external vitamin Cs. Um, and then I would say the second ingredient or second product is retinol. So um, the retinol I have, where do I have here? I think I put, that's not it. Okay, this is the 5%. This is the one I use, so it's a bit loved here. So this is 5%. This is a very heavy duty. This is the most percentage you're going to get over the counter. It's way too strong for a lot of people. Um, if you want even stronger than that, you need to go to your dermatologist and your dermatologist will write you a prescription for um, 
uh, let me see, it's called uh, Retin, uh, Retin-A, right? They write your prescription. It's very, very strong. So over the counter, you, everything you're going to get is right around, you know, 0.75 to 1%. That's basically kind of a sweet spot if you've never used retinol before. One of the keys, so that retinol can be very irritating to the skin. So one of the great keys to making it not as, excuse me, irritating to your skin is to have it blended with some lipophilic vitamin C. And lipophilic vitamin C is vitamin C, oil-based vitamin C, so not l acid, which is water-based. You want it, uh, an oil-based vitamin C, which is um, tetrahexadecyl ascorbate or, um, yeah, uh, hexy... Um, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I can't always get it right, right? Whatever I said earlier, you want the oil base, it's going to come back. It's seriously going to come back. This is what happens to me. It leaves and then it comes back. Um, I think it's hexidecyl ascorbate, right? So you want that mixed in with it if you can, because that makes it so it's not, it's not irritating. Like, I mean, this, this retinol right here with the image MD, this is the other, whoop brand that I carry that has retinol um, is very mild. I've never had anybody have a reaction to this unless you have rosacea, Melinda. This, you know, then I would say use it every other day, but it's going to be of a lesser quantity. I believe this is 0.75. This is 5%. So, you know, I think if you've never used it before, start with a lower. I think also the ordinary, if you want to go really cheap, the ordinary makes a retinol. I believe it's in squalene, which is olive oil and um, I don't know how irritating that is. I've had people tell me it's very irritating because it doesn't contain vitamin C as well. So I don't know, but it's cheap. So if you use it and you get a reaction, it's cheap. Um, the other side of this coin is that having a reaction to retinol is actually a very good thing because it means that it's working. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about super negative, like a rash or something. I mean, like some dry skin, some flaking, um, the first, when I first started using retinol, this was maybe five or six years ago. I'm 57 right now. So I think I started using it in my early fifties, believe it or not. Um, I think I'm a little on the lazy side, to be honest. Like I hate, I hate like having tons of products, you know what I mean? I've always been like that, even though I've got tons of products. So, um, so I used, um, started using it and I did have redness and I would have redness for a couple days, but over the long haul, I don't have any redness at all. And I want to say, Melinda, this does go hand in hand with the using probiotics in your gut because you're strengthening your gut. Your strength, it's, it's, your gut is your second, is, is your second brain, right? And so it affects your skin immediately. The better your guts, the better your skin. It's hand in hand. You cannot separate those two things. And we want to, we want to like eat, you know, food laden with preservatives and crap and have our skin look great. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. So I would say, you know, strengthen your gut, start using a retinol and use that. I would say, you know, when you start out, use it like every other day. I can use it every day without any problem at all. I've been using it on my age spot right there. My beautiful little age spot. This is Henry, my age spot. He's got a male name because he irritates me a little bit. Just saying. Um, and you know, I just pop a little bit, just like touch it right on there every day. And it's gone down enormously. So it does make a huge difference to, um, hello from Santa Clara. Hi, Marissa. Thanks for joining us. So, so please write your questions, Marissa. And don't forget, um, all of you don't forget this 15% off, up 15% off truth treatments, actually my whole store up until Sunday midnight prices go up on Monday. Not my fault. Um, Okay. So I would use this. If you can use it every day, use it. And a lot of times I'll just put a little bit on my spot and then I'll put it, you know, we all kind of get droopy right through here. So I'll just put a little bit here. And if you can put a little bit around your crow's feet, that helps too. Just helps to keep that your cells turning over. So what, what retinol does and why it works just to give you a little bit of breakdown here is retinol gets underneath the skin and it stimulates your skin. It's incredibly stimulating. And what it does is it encourages cell turnover. So it tells your, you, this is the top layer of your skin. It actually gets down to the epidermis, way down in the dermis, right? So it really goes down there and it tells them, you know, turn over, make some new cells. Because as we get older, our skin slows down. It doesn't turn over as quickly. That's why little babies have that beautiful skin because their bodies are growing and working and they're getting a lot of cell turnover. As we get older, 
you just, you know, everything, right? Everything slows down, right? I can do the same diet and exercise and not lose a pound, right? This is how it all works because our bodies have slowed down so much. So what retinol does and vitamin C for that matter is it, it encourages cell turnover. And so it automatically stimulates collagen. It automatically stimulates your body to make more hyaluronic acid. Like it's a fair, it's very, very powerful. And I love hyaluronic acid used separately in order to plump up the skin. I didn't use some this morning. Normally I do if I'm going to be on camera because it, it instantly plumps up your skin. Um, having said that, retinol really is very, very stimulating and fabulous for your skin. So I would say, you know, and you can also use it on your neck. So I actually take my retinol eh, maybe a couple times a week and I pull it down my neck. Um, so that can really help to get this to slough off. And that's why you get all that exfoliated looking skin, right? That dry skin in there. Um, oh my gosh. Thank you, Melinda. Hit the like button. It helps my algorithm. Thank you. Yes, please do that. Uh, so that's, that's why retinol is just so incredibly important. And I would say, you know, two best bang for buck is vitamin C and retinol and use them you know, religiously, just use them and you will really notice a difference. And if you stop noticing a difference, then it means you need to up it. You need to raise it, your quantity of vitamin C and your quantity of retinol. Now, obviously there are other things that I use and I'm going to go into the other things that I use here in a minute, but I want to answer a couple more questions and then I'll go into that of other sort of tricks that you can do to help cell turnover. Um, okay. Carla asked a couple more. Um, you're welcome, Carla. I try to be helpful. Uh, how do you feel about using only essential oils and a carrier oil for skincare? In other words, no lab made ingredients. So the trouble with that, and that's actually a great question, Carla, the trouble with just using um, oils, and I love oils. I, I'm an oil fan, okay? I've got a lot of oils, if you could see all my stuff. Um, the trouble is that oils within themselves are not formulated to get beneath the top layer of the skin with by themselves, right? So if you take olive oil or coconut oil, you know, and, and I've worked on people. So this little story, I used to shoot a lot of yoga videos. So for Gaia TV, they have a whole yoga platform called, I can't remember what it's called now. <laughs> it's been a while. Anyway, I, sh I worked with a lot of yoga people. Um, which kind of burnt me out on yoga a little bit, I do have to say. But anyway, the the one of the I've had people come in and say, "Hey, I only use organic ingredients. I only use you know olive oil on my skin or coconut oil on my body. Like I'm you know because I'm all natural." And what would happen is their acid levels in their skin was were like really out of whack. So for example, the top layer would be very dry. The underneath you'd be very oily, and this happens because those oils, if they're not properly formulated, just sit on the surface of your skin. They don't, they can't get underneath the skin. And this actually is what separates, so to speak, the men from the boys when it comes to um, products is, does that product, is that product, product formulated to get beneath your skin? If, if it isn't formulated properly, in other words, if a compounding pharmacist has not dealt with that product, it's not going to do anything. And it's unfortunate because I love the feel of oil, right? I've, I have a muscle in my arm that's been really bothering me since I broke my arm and broke my wrist about, I don't know if y'all remember about a month ago, I had a big old cast on. Anyway, I've been putting this oil on this muscle and oh, it's Caledon, Caled, search of the sea, Calendalia, I can't even say it, oil. Anyway, it feels amazing. I love it. It's good for the muscle, but it's not actually going to do anything for my skin because it can't get underneath. Pure oils can't. So that's why um, <clears throat> I think when you're dealing with skincare, so this, I'm going to actually share what most companies do when it comes to skincare. And this is like a real like eye opener when it comes to skincare and why I've chosen the skincare brands that I have and why I recommend what I recommend because of the, one of these, this is like a key ingredient, key problem in the skincare industry. I could go right now to, um, they're, they're basically called houses, like skincare houses or pharmaceutical houses. So you go into them and you say, hey, I want to may have a skincare line. I want to make, you know, say a, a cleanser and I want to say it's got vitamin C and alpha hydroxy acids. So what they'll do then is say what type and then they'll lower that type down depending on your price point. So now this isn't the case for everybody, right? Because you can get some really high value products out there for not a lot of money. You can. 
Um, I think The Ordinary is one of those brands that ends up doing fairly well on a lot of their stuff. Not everything, but a lot of it. But having said that, I could go in and say, hey, I want a really cheap form of vitamin C. Can you just make this for me? Just say it's got 20% vitamin C, use l ascorbic acid. Um, I'm only going to charge $15 for it, so it's very cheap. Um, and I'm going to say it will change everybody's life. So you, they, what they do is they go in, they buy that, they get that made. So they don't make it. They pay to have that made by that company. Or, uh, you know, they could say it's all organic skin. They could say a lot of stuff. The, the industry is not controlled. It's really, really not controlled. So people make claims that are so crazy. <laughs> Sometimes I read things, I'm like, seriously, you're saying this is going to change my life in two weeks and it's freaking L-ascorbic acid? Like, no. <laughs> so, you know, you really have to be savvy, right? Because there's a ton of lies in this industry. It's like, it's it's terrible. Um, having said that, you know, most lines do that. They don't formulate their own skincare. They don't have their own formulators. So they're just coming up with something cheap. And the worst part of it is that if you... Um, like if you look into some skincare lines that are super successful, uh, I'm not going to pull one out of my head at the moment, but you know, that they're charging, you know, two, $300. There was one that I read that was charging $300 for their vitamin C serum and their vitamin C, the primary active ingredient was number 12 down on the list. Number 12. That's the first active ingredient was that far down on the deck. The first three to five ingredients have the most impact. And none of those ingredients were, were actually active, right? In other words, they didn't do anything. They were, they smelled nice. They felt good. They're amazing. You think this is fabulous. I'm spending $300. No, just go down, spend, you know, get your, <laughs> save some money. <laughs> go get something with a better vitamin C that's higher up on the deck. So, you know, I think this is, this is where if you can learn a few key ingredients, like what I'm talking about, you could go online, look at the ingredient deck. And actually I just cut and paste. If I don't know what that ingredient is, cut and paste, put it in your browser and it'll come up. And if you think, wonder if it's a toxic ingredient, go to the working, um, WSG work, no working, what's it called? I'll, I'll put that on Monday's newsletter. Um, God, what's it called? It's called something, work, Environmental Working Group. Thank you. EWG.org. So I'll put that in the chat here. EWG.org. So that's a great, if, you, if you're interested in what brands are non-toxic, you know, like we talked about tooth treatments not being on there yet, and I've got hair poking up, don't I? This is all backwards. It's hard to keep track. Anyway, oh, I'm getting worse. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. There we go. Okay. Um, anyway, it's not on there yet, but that's okay. He's working on it. Having said that, if you want to know <clears throat> if this particular sunblock is non-toxic or moisturizer or whatever, that's a incredibly, that's a great resource. And you can also put in, in their search bar ingredients and it comes up what level on the toxicity scale it is. You will be shocked how many toxic ingredients there are in certain skincare brands. It's rather horrifying. So I would say do your homework before you buy anything, even a cheap product. Why not? You know, just do your homework. So, um, okay. So Melinda asked, or someone of you asked a question here, what is the name of the jar you are using? Okay. Are you talking about my retinol? Is that what you meant? So this is the, um, retinol 5% that I was showing. It's very loved. Um, I've actually, this lasts a really long time. I've had this for six months and I use it almost every day and look how much is left. So this, I can't remember what this retails. I want to say it's 120, <clears throat> 120, um, which sounds like a lot for a retinol, but I've been using it for six months. So, you know, again, that's a value added. I mean, I'm very into, um, you know, buy value and get the most out of that and go cheap where you can. So one of the other areas you can go cheap. <clears throat> Hold on. Let me just be sure I'm answering questions here. Uh, Carla asks, what is the truth treatments product that helps the product to get into the skin so it's not just laying on the surface? That it's an ingredient. Oh, oh, you're talking about biomimetic mist. So, um, so do I have it? Oh, I've got one. Woohoo. So this is my biomimetic mist. So this is actually ionic minerals. Your body needs ionic minerals. The way your body gets, I am going to go talk about moisturizers in a minute, but the way your body receives ionic minerals is through eating green leafy vegetables. Okay. So that's your kale. Um, you know, I've got some, um, heads of, uh, beets like the, the, those greens I'll, I'll go ahead and cook up and eat. That is your ionic minerals. 
needs to come from the earth. It gets it from planet earth. Okay. Very important. Um, so there's so much I could say about that, but anyway, it's very, very important, but topically putting ionic minerals in your skin, in your, um, using it with other products helps it get beneath your skin and it really stimulates your skin. It's great for your skin. Lots of brands make products that improve the efficacy of their ingredients that contains ionic minerals. So that's, this is Truth Treatments version. It's called Biomimetic Mist. Excuse me. I use this in conjunction with Truth Treatments and the Hyaluronic Hydrator. So that's actually called, um, that's the we go. Oh my God. I can't believe I have these in front of me. It's amazing. I'm never that organized. So the, um, hyaluronic mineral hydrator is the other one in this truth trifecta. So this is a great, if you're going to use your 50% off, this is a great way to use it because those three together and you just put them in your hand, you rub them all over your skin and it's, it's very activating for your skin. I like to use these in the morning for, um, the antioxidant benefit of the vitamin C. Um, having said that, I think using your vitamin C in the morning is great, whatever brand you're using, because it's going to help to protect your skin from pollution. Um, and it's fair. It's, it's wonderful for you. I, you know, it's like bathing your skin in nutrition. So, um, okay. So let's talk about, I'm going to go into moisturizers unless there's another subject that, um, that you all want to talk about right now. So I would say moisturizers, um, if you can get a moisturizer with some vitamin C in it, that would be incredible. I think that's, again, we're, we're going for bang for buck. I think if you have very dry skin, a drink more spring water, you know, I drink about a gallon of water a day. I'm in the bathroom all the time. It's really, it's just how it is. Um, but stay away from sodas. You know, I like coffee. I live in Ecuador and coffee is here is unbelievable. So it's so freaking good. And I was drinking two cups a day back in Boulder and I'm up to about four now because <laughs> it's so good. I'm having a hard time with the coffee problem. Um, having said that, those are not great on your skin. And the reason I bring these up is because they're dehydrating. It's very dehydrating to, to drink these kinds of things. So the more you can, you know, take your oils, drink a lot of spring water, you know, use, um, use topical things that are going to help with the oils, um, will really help to combat that very dry skin. And as we get older, our skin gets drier, you know, everything sort of, we become so much less hydrated. We have to work harder at staying hydrated than we did in our twenties. I mean, I have a, I have a 21 year old and a 19 year old daughters who their skin is amazing and they do nothing. And it's like, wow, okay, that's right. It was like that when I was in my twenties. Now I have to take a lot of oils and I need to use a lot of topical oils. So I would say if you can get a moisturizer with lipophilic vitamin C, again, that is an oil soluble vitamin C that's going to really help. Having said that it's not totally necessary. Um, I like, you know, my favorite moisturizer, um, I mean, I go back and forth, right? I use my, my transdermal C balm, which I love because this has 70% vitamin C in it. So good. I love it. I want to like take a bath in some of these, like they're so wonderful and I can use it around my eyes. So I don't use eye cream. I don't know how many of you use eye cream. Some people love it. I'm not a huge fan. I just use my C serum around my eye area and a little bit of sebum if I need it around my eyes. Um, or if I'm going to be outside during the day, I'll use this one. This is the, um, SPF 50 daily defense moisturizer by image. So I love this has a little bit of zinc. So when you put it on, there's a little bit of a white, you know, and then it goes down. Um, but I'm outside all the time here in Ecuador. I go running almost every day or I ride my bike or I'm out walking. It tends to be very sunny. Um, I actually live up in the mountains. I'm in Cuenca, which is towards the South part of, um, of, Ecuador. So I I'm at about 10,000 feet right now. So it's actually pretty cool all the time, but we do get a lot of sunshine and that we're very close to the sun. So I put, you know, sunblock and then my skin on my face ends up being a whole shade lighter than my neck. Um, and then I think the next time I do a live, I'm going to be way more organized about it, but I am going to do, um, some makeup. We'll focus on makeup next time. If, if you want that, I mean, let me know what interests you, but, um, but I darken up my foundation so that I can combat, you know, the differences in, in colors or sometimes I just walk around with my white face. I don't care. But, um, but having said that, I think if you are outside a lot, do get an SPF, um, whether it's in your foundation or separate. Um, I really like the image brand. I don't carry this particular part of their brand, but it's called prevention. I've got it over there on my, um, 
in my with all my stuff but it's a 30 you can get up to a 50 i think in that so those are really good and i think that you still no matter what if you get a 30 or a 50 spf it doesn't matter you need to put it re-put it on about every two hours it does matter a little bit but not as much as you think it does like a lot of people think i'll put on a 50 and i'm good all day long that's not true um you're good for about two to three hours um but you know with this i like this because i'm not outside for longer than maybe an hour or two at a time so it works fine for me um, just depends on what you're doing. So that's moisturizer. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Let's talk about hyaluronic acid. How's that? Or no, no, no. Let's talk about that. I brought this up earlier. Um, and it's other things you can do to have great skin. And I did a video recently in my bathroom, which was super fun. Um, you can see my new little bathroom. It's not little, it's big. Um, but of all the other things you can do if in order to stimulate cell turnover and have great skin. So because I don't use Botox or fillers or um, I don't do plastic surgery, like, you know, what you see is what you get here. Um, I think the, the things I really focus on are doing every month I do um, a peel. So an acid peel, and that sounds terrible, acid, but it's alpha hydroxy acids and beta hydroxy acids. So it's lastic acid, salicylic acid, and... There's one more and it's not coming to me, but maybe I need more coffee. Anyway, these acids are key for stimulating the skin. So you can go to an esthetician and have that done. I'm licensed so I can actually buy my own. Um, but I think it's worthwhile if you're very keen to have great skin is to go ahead and get your... Um, to get that done. So, you know, before I moved here, I used to go every month to go see my friend and she would do some alpha hydroxy acids on my skin. And it basically burns the top layer of your skin mildly and it stimulates cell turnover like what I talked about earlier. So very, very important. Um, I think um, it is, you know, that, that's going to cost you more. I'm, I'm more speaking to those of you who really want, you know, a big difference in your skin is to do that and then do microdermabrasion or micro needling. There's LED lights. You know, you can check out that video. I'll go ahead and put a link to my my bathroom video where I went through every single one of those. Um, I'll do this on Monday's newsletter. I think those are, you know, consistent. Everything's about consistency with skin. It's all about how you eat, how you live what you, you know, what you do on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis. And in that video, I break down daily, weekly, monthly. Um, and I probably do more than any of you are probably ever going to do <laughs> because I'm crazy. And, you know, this is what I'm into. Actually, not crazy. I'm actually pretty, pretty calm. But I do try a lot of things. Um, but as you know, if you, if you, as all of you know, I'm very into, um, loving your body, right? So not thinking if I do all these things, then I'll love my body. That's not it. You love your body a hundred percent today, right now in this moment, because you're perfect like you are. And then do whatever you want to, to that's for your highest and best good, that it was within that scope of love, right? I'm really anti the idea that, um, unless I look like X, I'm not beautiful and I'm not lovable. Like we equate those two, right? Um, and I've done this, I've totally done this in relationships, like, oh, he would love me if my butt was smaller or, you know, whatever. And that's not true, right? It's totally not true. That's not unconditional love. That's not unconditional love for self or ha receiving that from other people. So I'm really, really, really pro you love you, um, no matter what. And if you want to take other steps like what I do, but, you know, I do it in in sort of a happiness, right? In a joy, like, oh, let me try that. That'll be fun. You know, I don't, I don't, I try really hard and I'm not perfect, but I try hard to do it in, within the scope of I love me. And one of the best strategies to grow in your self-love um, is every day, put your hands around your neck like this, because the neck is the center of change in the body and look into the mirror and say, I love you. And just say, I love you. I love you, Melinda. I love you, Marissa. I love you, Carla. Um, who else is here that I want to say I love you? So just tell yourself, I love you. You know, and when I first did this, I did it um, when I was going through my divorce. So you can imagine, right? And I could not get through one sentence of saying that to myself. And it shocked me because I thought, if I can't say it, then what about my daughters? Like, do I want my daughters to not be able to look in the mirror and say, I love you? Like, I want them to love themselves. I want them to value themselves, right? So um, so that brought up, that was like one of the key components here for me to 
start loving myself. Anyway, I bring all that up to say, I've gone way off topic here, but you do what is in your highest and best good, in your high value of yourself. Okay, so Marissa just asked, thank you, Melinda, for the hearts. I appreciate that. All right, Marissa just asked, is retinol okay to use in a dry climate? I'll be moving to New Mexico and I'm worried about the dry climate care. Thank you, Marissa. That's a great question. So I think... Um, they're, they're really, you know, I, I've heard different things. I've read, you know, I was in a very dry climate. So I lived in Colorado for 10 years. I didn't, personally speaking, I could use retinol every single day there, but I also really hydrate. So I think if you're not hydrating yourself, you're not, you know, drinking tons of water and taking your omegas and, um, you know, maybe using a good moisturizer and you're not, you know, you're not taking great care of your body. And then you put on a retinol, your, you know, your skin is going to have a reaction. So I think, um, I think all of these things go together. I think if you are doing those things and you use a retinol, you should be fine. You should be totally fine. It shouldn't make any difference. The one thing caveat I would say to that is that retinol does tend to be um, more irritating to the skin. So because it's causing cell turnover in a good way, right? This is a good thing. So I would say you're, you're getting, um, you're getting, it's making your skin more sensitive because it's doing that, right? So if you have sensitive skin, like what Melinda was talking about earlier with her rosacea, then I would say with retinol, use it at night because that will help you. If you use it in the morning, I think, um, you know, you're, then you're going outside, it's getting some sun, it's getting more pollution. It's, it's not so good. I would use it at night. So it has a chance to work in your skin. And then during the day, you be sure you use your SPF because otherwise it can cause more irritation. So I would say, Marissa, you're fine. I would say just really be sure your skin is really hydrated and use your SPF, um, in the morning, use your retinol at night. Um, and then see how your skin does. You know, I think a lot of this is just really paying attention to our body. Um, you know, if my skin ends up being more um, irritated, I can ask myself, like, is it a new product? Is it something I ate? Um, am I super stressed? Like, there's all these factors that kind of go into it. So I think just really keep, you know, really stay aware of um, what's causing your body some issues during that. Um, but I would say, really, if you're taking good care of yourself, you should be fine to use retinol. So, you know, and I would say, you know, be sure if you're out in the sun for hours and hours, you know, that you go ahead and reapply because otherwise it, you know, it, it's not good for you anyway. But I think, um, with that amount of retinol in your skin, on your skin, I think you might get more irritation. So anyway, just be mindful of those things. So I really appreciate that question. That was great. Um, okay. So, um, what do you have guys have other questions? So it's, we have 10 minutes left. So what other questions do you have about skincare? Let's see. Um, oh, I was going to talk about, so I'm just going to keep chatting. I'm going to keep chatting unless one of you ask a question. So let's talk about hyaluronic. Oh no, we we're talking about alpha hydroxy acids. So I would say you can use an over-the-counter alpha hydroxy acid. Truth Treatments does make an AHA that's almost, it's very watery. So I would just be careful, like pump it into your hand and then put that on. And alpha hydroxy acids, that will help cell turnover. A lot of lines put it in other products. So for example, ImageMD puts it in their cleanser. Some, some products put it in their moisturizers. They're, um, you know, I don't know, they, they, or maybe they mix it with something else. It doesn't matter. Like, I think just pay attention to how much you're getting of that. You know, I like to use things like if I take a vitamin, I want to take a vitamin C, I want to take my, my B, my D, my A, my E, right? I take everything separately because I think it's better as opposed to lumping everything into a multivitamin. Some people would argue with that. I think that's the same when it comes to skincare. I prefer things not to be so enmeshed really depends on the ingredients. I do like enmeshing vitamin C with just about anything because it's great. It's great for you. So I think see how much AHAs are in other products that you're using. If you're not getting any, I would say get an AHA or a product with an AHA and that will help with cell turnover. So all of the <clears throat> things that I'm talking about are encouraging the skin, are encouraging cell turnover, are encouraging exfoliation. And alpha hydroxy acids are phenomenal for exfoliation. That's what they're for. Um, and that's why we use them in peels, but you can use a milder form every single day. If you know, like I said, with the AHAs in, um, truth treatment. So, um, and Melinda just asked, what order would you use skincare? Oh my gosh, that's a great question. Um, 
So I, I would say use the most sheer to the most opaque. So for example, you start off, you cleanse your skin, right? So normally that's a fairly sheer kind of a texture wise thing, right? As a cleanser. And then you use your vitamin C and then your retinol. So you're getting, you're getting denser, right? In the color and the look of it. Um, and then your moisturizer should be the most dense. So that should be the last thing that you use. So just kind of a rule of thumb, go according to the color. And that's one way to do it. Now, on the other hand, you know, because I'm me and I'm constantly experimenting all the time and a rebel, I'll do my moisturizer and go, whoops, I forgot to do my vitamin C. Let me put that on top. So it, it, this isn't like going to do or die, right? <laughs> Just see what works. I think it's better to put your vitamin C on straight away. So clean your skin, put your vitamin C on first, because that is, you know, the most impacting thing you're going to use that then you use your retinol, which is as equal in impact, right? And then go from there. <clears throat> so, but always use your, I would say use your moisturizer last, just because it's usually the most opaque, plus it has SPF. So, you know, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not very obedient. You know, I've had, <laughs> I have people write on my videos sometimes like, no, that's not right. And, you know, I think <clears throat> a lot of that has to do <clears throat> excuse me, that I really pay close attention to my body. So I feel like if something doesn't work, I'm going to know it immediately. A lot of people don't. So maybe that's why I'm like this. Um, I also, I'm an artist, right? So I don't know if any of you are artists, but artists are not obedient people. Like we're, we're like, but I don't want to do it that way. I want to try this. And so, you know, even when I do makeup for me, it's all about the end result. I don't care how I get there. I don't care how anybody gets there. It's the end result. And if it works for you, hats off, right? I don't, I'm not into this kind of 12 step program when it comes to just about anything, you know, I'm into what works for you um, and just really making it individualized. So, so that's just me though. I mean, all of you watch my channel. Thank you. Um, and I think <laughs> you, maybe you like a little rebellion in your skincare and makeup. I, you know, otherwise you probably wouldn't tune in. Um, so, so I appreciate that. Okay. So let's move on. We've got eight more minutes left. So I'm going to talk about alpha hydro or high hyaluronic mineral, hyaluronic acid. So hyaluronic acid, I, you know, again, my top bang for buck products really are vitamin C and retinol. Absolutely. Hands down. And I explained why, um, I would say if you want to branch out from there, and you're like me, maybe you, um, you know, you're, you have a public, you're interfacing well with the public, or you really just want to look great every single day. I would say, get yourself some hyaluronic acid. So this is great. Um, hyaluronic acid, what it does is it gets into your skin and it plumps it instantly. Your skin does not hold it. In other words, you, if you know what you used yesterday with your hyaluronic acid doesn't build up and work today. It doesn't work that way. Vitamin C, retinol, that's not the case. These are long-term kind of ingredients, right? You, you start using vitamin C, you use it for two weeks, you're going to go, wow, I really noticed a huge difference because it builds up in the system. That's like taking anything internally is same, same type of thing. Hyaluronic acid is not like that. You have to use it every single day um, because your, your body doesn't carry it. Now, I think I brought up earlier that if you use retinol, it helps your body to make its own hyaluronic acid, which is fabulous. So again, retinol is such a key ingredient. But if you're using hyaluronic acid, generally speaking, I use this when I'm not working from home. So I work from home probably half the time and then half the time I go into coffee shops and I have a co-working group I'm a part of here in Ecuador um, or I'm on camera two days a week. So I'll go ahead and use it then. That's just my own choice um, because I'm lazy. Just remember I'm lazy, okay? <laughs> so I'll use a little hyaluronic acid and I'll use some biomimetic mist together, um, the ionic bi biomimetic mist put that, I'll do my vitamin C, I'll put that on, on top of it. Um, and then put my moisturizer on and it just instantly, my skin goes, thank you. And it plumps up right away. So love that. So if you are interfacing with public or you just really want to look great, I think hyaluronic acid is a great thing to use. And don't, you don't do, you don't use it at night. You don't need it at night. You just, you need it in the morning. So, and you can pick and choose when you use it. So that's just great to know. And I think sometimes people use it every day thinking that it builds up. It doesn't. So that's, that'll save you money. Just use it when you need it, which is fab, right? So I love this. I love this. And this will last, I think I've had this for at least five or six months. So, I mean, the good thing about truth treatments is that it's so concentrated. A, you need very little of it. And B, 
it lasts forever and ever and ever. So, you know, I think that's such a value. For me, that's high value. I would rather spend, I don't know what you all are like, but I would rather buy a really good quality dress that I'm going to be able to wear for the next, you know, five or six years. And it's going to look great like this one. This is, I love this dress. Um, I then go to Target, get a cheap one that you wash it twice and it's dead, right? So this is just how I end up living. This is my lifestyle, but I do that with um, skincare. Absolutely makes an enormous difference. So, um, so that's great. All right. I think we're almost done here. We've got like five minutes left. Bang for buck skincare. Um, Okay, so what about what about um, doing um, exfoliating, like the granular exfoliate, exfoliants, right? You know what I'm talking about? So a lot of skincare companies do cleansers. I can't remember what company it was. They sent me some stuff. I get, I get sent a lot of, of products, to be honest, and I try it. And sometimes I'll do a review on it if I like it. I don't tend to do negative reviews. That's just not what I do. Um, but if I like it, I'll go ahead and say something good about it or I just won't use it at all. And I've actually been sent stuff and had to email the, the brand and say, I'm really sorry, I'm not going to I'm not going to promote this. Um, and I always tell them politely why, because I think that's important that they you know, most of the marketing people don't care. They're just there to market. But but having said that, um, you know, I've tried a lot of different things And this particular brand. Their cleanser was um, very granular. It was an exfoliating cleanser. And. Um, I, they wanted you to use it, of course, twice a day. And I think that's too much. I think it's, I felt like it was too rough on the skin and it was too much to use it morning and night. I felt like it would strip the skin. And there's like this fine balance, I think, with your skin is keeping the pH. Skin pH is about 4.5. So pH goes from 1 to 10. And 7 is your body, is where your body needs to be. Your skin is slightly more acidic than your, than your body. So, um, but what happens is if you use too much, too much products on it, you end up stripping the oils out and you end up making it more, um, more acidic. It just doesn't work. Um, it ends up stripping the skin and I've done people's makeup. I did, there was a man whose makeup I used to do all the time who, um, his girlfriend was an esthetician. So he was using so many products and he started explaining all the products he was using and his skin was like, it just didn't look healthy. It was starting to look dull. And now he goes, I don't know what's going on. I said, oh, you stop, <laughs> like stop, use your vitamin C and your retinol and your moisturizer and stop and get a peel once a month, but don't do like he's, he was just doing too much. So I think there's like this sweet spot. And I honestly feel that if you exfoliate too much, like you exfoliate in the morning and you exfoliate at night, I, I think it's too much. Use your alpha hydroxy acids maybe once a day or have it in another product, but don't do it that much. Um, I think if your skin starts to be irritated or um, so you notice your skin getting thinner, then what you're using is not, not as good. It could also be a nutrition issue. Like you're not, don't have enough vitamin B in your system. So there's, you know, there's tons of factors obviously that go into this, but I think you being, becoming really, really savvy on your own skin um, and being able to make determination on what's going to work for you um, is why this is so important. So um Okay, so I think I've about talked about everything I wanted to talk about. So I'm so grateful to all of you. I mean, I think I lost some people because I switched streaming links and, you know, oh, well, it's my first time doing it. So I'm, I'm always open to making mistakes. <laughs> it's like, that's what I do for a living. I make mistakes. So I think... Um, my bangs need cutting. So I think, you know, I really appreciate you guys joining me. I've loved having you here. I love all your questions. It actually helps me to know what content to make for you. I love that, right? Because I don't always know what people are interested in. I'm in my own little bubble over here in Ecuador. So I love, I love hearing from you. I always feel like you can write to me and say, Hey, I just, I'm interested in XYZ. I think a few of you, I think Carla does that all the time, <laughs> like by the way. So, um, you know, that's fine. I, I'm always open to suggestions. So really appreciate you all joining today. Please, you know, use the code. So the discount code is SB15, 15% off, um, through Sunday night because Truth Treatments goes up Monday. I'm really sorry about that. It's not my fault. I didn't do it, <laughs> but use that. Um, and then, you know, I'll have some other sales coming up here. Whoops. I think I just did something I didn't want to do anyway. Yes. Thank you so much for joining me. I am so grateful. I'm so glad I just even get to interface with you a bit, like makes me so happy. So thank you. Okay. Thanks, Carla, Melinda, Marissa. Appreciate you guys joining me, even though it's just a small group. That's okay. I appreciate that. Like <laughs> next week, I might do another one on, um, on, uh, makeup. Maybe we'll do a makeup. That'd be really fun. So 
Okay, you guys take care. Love, kisses, mwah. Have a great weekend. Uh, whoops, how do I go out of this? I have no idea what I'm doing. Stop streaming.